name is Umaru Kadagan and uh, I'd like to invite you back in my kitchen for some more functional medicine cooking. Let's take some of that knowledge we have about nutrition and functional medicine and turn it into absolutely heavenly tasty cooking. Today I'm going to show you how to make a whole grain pizza. Not a partial whole grain pizza with some whole grain flour but 100% whole grain pizza. So what we need for a whole grain pizza is of course we need a bit of yeast some baker's yeast. We need some honey, or it could be a, a, um, maple syrup as well. We need a bit of sea or rock salt, and then we need some whole grain flour, but I'm not using just any type of whole grain flour. What I have here is a special type of flour called kamut, or giant durum, so it's actually seems to be the ancestor of the durum wheat that is grown in southern Europe and around the Mediterranean. And what's really interesting about this type of grain, Kamut, is that although, as you can see, it's whole grain, this whole grain, you still get a rather light flour from it. So you can get everything you need. You'll get the kernel, you'll get all the nutritious and all the living parts of the Kamut seeds and you can still get it, make a very light dough. So this type of flour, kamut flour, is brilliant for pizzas, but also if you were to make pizza bread, or if you were to make burger buns, and then put something healthy inside. So you can actually get 100% full or whole grain, and you can still get something that's very light and airy when you bake it. Because if you bake with 100% whole grain wheat, as an example, or 100% whole grain spelt flour, you might end up with a brick. So if you bake, use a baking stone, sometimes you might just be wondering, okay, what's the bread or, and what's the baking stone? But that won't be the case here. So the first thing we need to do is get about 25 grams of baker's yeast. Then we need a tablespoon full of honey. Now I'm adding the honey because we're going to mix the honey and yeast with a bit of water and salt and leave it for a short while and then the yeast will actually start eating the honey or have you feed on the honey and wake up so we pre-start the fermentation before we add the flour you also need about a tablespoon of high quality salt and then two and a half deciliters of lukewarm water which is slightly more than a cup, it's about one and a qu one cup and a quarter. And then we're going to mix this thoroughly. And if you can't make it work with a spoon, then just take a fork. And make sure everything is mixed thoroughly and the yeast is completely dissolved. And then we'll actually leave this for 15 minutes to allow the yeast to start fermenting, basically to wake up from its beauty sleep before we add the flour. So before we just take a short break and leave this to start pre-fermenting, let me talk a bit more about the flour and, and this grain giant durum or camel. Of course, this isn't gluten-free. So if you have celiac disease or you're very sensitive to gluten, it's a no-go. But some people seem to be okay. you can tolerate smaller amounts of gluten and this one compared to the modern hybrids of, we of wheat we grow has less gluten and probably also has a gluten structure that's easier to digest so this might be okay for people who are mildly gluten sensitive to, you know to have this on, on, on occasion but if you are sensitive to gluten some of these ancient wheats still are no go so spelt kamut um, triticale, whatever else you find that are basically the ancestors of the modern wheat hybrids or varieties we grow today, they're all a no-go if you have celiac disease or severe gluten sensitivity. And if you are really intent or intolerant of gluten, don't worry, I'll show you how to do this recipe in a gluten-free version afterwards. So you don't have to be left out from making lovely pizza or burger buns or pizza bread just because gluten isn't really your thing. But 
see you in 15.